Wall Street has been a loyal ally for Beijing, from pushing Bill Clinton to allow China to join the WTO, to getting Barack Obama not to label Beijing a currency manipulator, to trying to convince Donald Trump to enter into trade deals with China. Wall Street has lobbied for Chinese interests for decades. But the love affair between Wall Street and China has cooled down, if not come to an end, thanks to Papa Xi Jinping's heavy-handed intervention. Like any breakup, there are tears and heartbreak. Those who are heavily involved are shaken by the fateful ending. People who don't believe in the relationship are just relieved that the liaison is over. Hi everyone, welcome to my show, I'm Lei. Chinese dissident Wei Jinsheng is one person who has never believed in the relationship between Wall Street and China. More than 20 years ago, he saw firsthand how Wall Street was attracted to the Chinese business. He told a story in a 2018 interview. In early December of 1997, he was invited to dinner at the home of the chairman of the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations. He met 20 to 30 senior executives of large American companies. They Wei was branded the China's number one political dissident at the time. He was just deported to the U.S. after having been imprisoned for 18 years for his pro-democracy activities. The American executive's lack of sensibility in asking him to help them do business with China shows their lack of good judgment. The love affair between Wall Street and China started with a strong mutual attraction. In the late 1990s, when big Chinese banks struggled, with massive bad debts. Then Premier Zhu Rongji asked Wall Street to help. As part of the concession during the WTO negotiation, Zhu agreed to open up China's financial industry to Wall Street. The allure of the Chinese market was simply irresistible. Mr. Wall Street believed that he and Miss China would make a perfect couple. One had the money, the other had the market. However, 20 years have passed. The Chinese capital market has grown substantially, but American banks and brokerage firms had to settle for being bit players in a fast-growing market. Foreign financial firms' presence in China remained very low. But Mr. Wall Street was still infatuated. He was blind to the broken promise and kept trying to win over his love interest. I have lots of money. I can make you very rich. And knowing how to manipulate the relationship, Miss China replied, If you are serious, you have to play by my rules. Mr. Wall Street agreed. So Wall Street has allowed Chinese companies to list on the New York Stock Exchange without the financial auditing that American companies have to undergo. They don't have to share their financials because they are regarded as state secrets. According to Roger Robinson, former chairman of the U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission, Chinese companies are not compliant with federal securities laws, such as Dodd-Frank legislation or Sabine Oxley legislation. They are not submitting themselves to PCAOB audits like every American company needs to do. Consequently, with help from Wall Street, China was showered with vast amounts of capital. But there is still one problem. Miss China's constant rogue behavior doesn't make her well-liked in the community. So she said to Mr. Wall Street, I want people to like me. I want to go places. And he replied, that's no problem. I've got connections. 
Wall Street heavyweights such as Blackstone's Stephen Schwartzman became an important middleman between Beijing and Washington during the tough trade negotiation with the Trump administration in 2018. China's vice premier Liu He turned to Schwarzman for help, and others like BlackRock CEO Larry Fink, Goldman Sachs' David Solomon, and J.P. Morgan Chase's Jamie Dimon. Mr. Wall Street has stood by his love interest despite her bad reputation and bad behavior. In 2017, when Chinese companies that were traded in Hong Kong proposed charter changes requiring boards to seek advice from the Communist Party regarding major decisions, Wall Street voted in support. When Beijing lobbied heavily to include China's stock market in major Wall Street benchmark, index provider MSCI announced the inclusion of Chinese A shares in its emerging market indexes. Some institutional investors were apprehensive of the decision because of Chinese companies' lack of transparency. Two years later, MSCI quadrupled the percentage of Chinese shares from 5 to 20 percent, and after a long courtship and obediently lobbying in favor of Beijing, and after remaining committed during the pandemic, Mr. Wall Street finally got the promise he wanted. Now please pay attention, I said a promise. We'll have to wait and see if anything actually happens. That is, in May this year, Goldman Sachs and BlackRock received approval to operate wealth management businesses in China through a joint venture with state-owned banks. But just as Mr. Wall Street was becoming so happy and complacent about the progress he's making with Miss China, reality suddenly kicks in. Uh oh, Papa Xi Jinping doesn't like Mr. Wall Street. As the recent Didi IPO drama showed, Papa Xi wants Didi and other Chinese companies to be listed on Hong Kong stock exchanges, not American. Didi had already been warned about this. As recently as March of this year, Chinese media reported that Didi was planning to submit paperwork for a third quarter IPO in Hong Kong. But Didi loves New York because Mr. Wall Street has more money. So on June 8th, Didi announced the plan to go to New York for IPO, and the earliest listing would be the third quarter in 2021. However, secretly, Didi and Wall Street were planning for an IPO in the second quarter. It's like they were plotting to elope while Papa Xi was busy with his 100-year birthday party to celebrate the Chinese Communist Party. Miss Didi filed the IPO paperwork on June 10th, and with unprecedented speed, it got listed on the New York Stock Exchange within 20 days on June 30th, the day before Papa Xi's big centennial bash. To make sure the elopement would be well received, before Didi's stock was listed, the MSCI index announced that it would include Didi in the ranks of China's all-stock index after the IPO. The FTSE Russell also announced the inclusion of Didi in its global index. This shows you how badly Mr. Wall Street wants Miss Didi. Now, Papa is enraged by the Didi IPO elopement and decisively punished Didi and Wall Street. To warn all the other Chinese companies and set an example, Papa Xi struck Miss Didi with successive punishments from July 2nd until now. And well, he never liked Mr. Wall Street in the first place. Papa Xi is not a money man. According to Nels Fry, a China market entry and government relations consultant, Xi Jinping is a nationalist and lover of history who doesn't rate business people highly. Papa Xi despises those who put money first. Fry said that CCP officials openly called Wall Street CEOs Mai Guo Zai, a Chinese word that describes people who sell out their own country for self-interest. The Chinese Communist Party is foul, but the individuals aren't fools. So the love affair between Wall Street and China was doomed from the very beginning because the pair has irreconcilable and irrevocable differences. Their values are different. Their ideologies are different. Their angles are also different. The one thing that bonds them together is the love of money. 
Even Didi's stock prices showed signs of the impending breakup. Didi's public offering price is $14. It's not an auspicious number because 1-4 in Chinese is 幺四, which sounds like the phrase going to die. What's even worse is that on the first day of trading, it closed at $14.14. This is so ominous because the Chinese 1414 is literally saying going to die, period. I made two videos about the DD drama. They give you the complete story with all the gory details. I hope this story has shown that money shouldn't be the only thing in a relationship, any relationship. When we're blinded by the glitter of gold, we're guaranteed to go down.